Hey Pussino Pussinet, new little video. Uh, sorry if I sound a little bit, I think I'm starting to have a little bit of cold so I'll be drinking a little bit of water <coughs> or else this will happen a lot of stuff. So, right now I'm having, uh, I'm in uh, the States for a course and uh, the name of the course is a certificate in uh, safety management. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm going to start doing some course that uh, would like to go start going overseas and things like that for medical purpose, so helping clinics and uh, other stuff. So uh, I've been uh, getting interested in part of the course that I went in Whistler was about that disaster medicine and humanitarian medicine. But one thing that they kind of notice is that there's been an increase uh, uh, attacks on a lot of NGOs um, and uh, people has been actually targeted which previously was not so much happening but now it's becoming more and more so safety is becoming a big issue and for for NGOs so they, they're starting to become uh, they're starting to put more and more of those course for safety and actually there's another one which is more personal course and seems very interesting I'm going to try to go but unfortunately most of them are always given more in the UK because this is from the UK company that uh, came over here to give the course so um, uh, so what has to do with uh, with survivals and what we've been doing with self-reliance medicine well actually one of the uh, things that and Obviously, this is a copyright, so I'll be showing you a little bit uh, what we've been working on. So basically, this is the bread and butter of, of the course, and we're going through all that stuff. There'll be a link at the bottom where uh, this is their own frameworks. Uh, so it's called a, a security management frameworks, but it, it came from a book that there is a PDF form. So I'll be putting the link at the bottom. Uh, it's 323 pages. You don't need to read the whole 323 pages, but there is something like this. And why do I talk about that? The the thing that it comes with it is that most of those they're analyzing uh, threats and the threats in the NGOs because a lot of them goes in countries where either there's war or other conflict or developing country or uh, poor economies or tons of other reason is to do a proper analysis to um, so the reason you do this is either before you go for your uh, project or if you're there to kind of mitigate the threats and decide are, are we staying are we going and and other things like that well one thing that I found that it was interesting is that a lot of people sometime by looking at YouTube video we don't seem to be knowing, uh, we don't, the community doesn't seem to be having like a certain way of searching for what's what's the purpose. And a lot of, sometimes I read like a video response or the, the comments and some people ask those questions it's like, well, you know, how does it apply to me or should I be worried about this or uh, worry about this and everything. And what I saw when I, I started talking about that in the course was that it actually helps you to do that for yourself. So, for example, uh, one thing that uh, a lot of people, for example, were talking about um, in this medicine was cholera. So, in eighty, when there was this big outbreak, there was a big outbreak of cholera, well, people were like, well, we need to protect against it and everything. And we'll talk in a future uh, video about um, disease, infectious disease, and a little bit of the antibiotics that we should carry and, and my vision on that. But one thing that they kind of seems to forget is that you cannot have an outbreak of something that doesn't exist. So that means that for example, malaria. 
Well, malaria can only exist in certain parts of the world because it, it needs a certain ground to grow. And so I don't think that even if you had the worst disaster ever in Alberta, I don't think we'll ever had an outbreak of malaria because it doesn't exist at the beginning. So why would I have an outbreak of something that doesn't exist at the beginning? So what it becomes is that we kind of go on a ghost hunt of threats and safe, safe stuff that doesn't exist for her region. And when we look, for example, then YouTubes and maybe I have even the OBS because uh, I'm going to be oriented towards what's interesting me because this is what it's closer to. Like, I know uh, some of my safety uh, issues when I uh, start talking about sleeping um, emergencies uh, system. Well, it, it has to be down to like minus 30 Celsius or, uh, or even colder. Well, somebody that lives more south won't be an issue. So sometime if I do a video, maybe my opinion will be towards that because of this. And we can try to convince each other that which system is better. Well, it's two different. It's orange and apples. Same thing I found with this thing. And that's what I like about it is that maybe as a community, that would be a good thing to do is that if we use those tools that NGOs, I mean, you know, like we're talking about companies that send um, hundreds of people or I don't know how many, but they send projects in conflict place like Pakistan, Afghanistan and all this to assess the level of threats that wor that is worrisome for them. Well, why can we not use these same tools for our own evaluation? So that means that um, for example, um, one of them would be, for example, like those disease. So why would I stock up on, again, take my example of malaria medication when most likely I won't have an outbreak of malaria. But there's probably other disease like, uh, and again, we'll do a video on that, but um, so all, uh, uh, disease from animals and insects that could probably be more an outbreak so for example um, rats or other things that if there's floods and the rats comes out and they're more in the community where they would be more mostly in the sewer well then the issue is that now we can have the disease that they can carry that we can have an outbreak well if I can start doing those scenarios evaluating the threats then I could give a plan to how I can uh, prevent this or even uh, de uh, decrease uh, thing. And obviously this is a five days course. I cannot explain the whole uh, thing on this course, but just even to do an evaluation of just asking the question and following what those questions are. And that's why that link will be great for the book because it's basically this course is based on that book is um, uh, what would be my analysis? What would be my actors that I could be dangerous? Do I have like neighbors that I could be worse or uh, good uh, neighbors that could help me with um, with my survival? Um, what what things that I really need to worry about? Um, if thief is one thing, how can I set up my uh, house for a better protection? Is is the system that I have is protected to what it should be? If your zone is more in a um, um, earthquake versus flood versus uh, tornado, well, three kind of different disaster that has three different things. So by asking you those questions and this, it would kind of help you, I find. And I, I know that like, probably that's what I'm going to go do when I'm going to go back to sit down and kind of do this the same uh, approach that we're practicing now in our course but that we could use so anyway it was a little bit of idea that I wanted to throw out there and as you can see I'm not at home right now I'm just uh, at the uh, hotel so uh, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about that and see your opinions and hopefully that would be helpful 
little update in a way. There's uh, like I was I kept saying, uh, like right now I'm on the road all the way up to the end of uh, October. Uh, sorry, at the, at the end of September, beginning of October. And uh, when I get back, we'll uh, start getting uh, more into the, the the videos I keep talking about. So the medica the the dressing medication, the dressing videos, and a little bit more maybe on physical exam. I've been having a little bit more ideas and stuff, and a few more videos that comes. And I'm reading again a few books. I just finished one on Civil War, which was very interesting. Got a few ideas kind of running in the head and stuff of how they've been doing things. And, and it's very interesting to see like the different approach and stuff that they've been using back then that maybe we can use in our time. So to study the history, to understand better how our, our future would be bad is really what I'm, I've been focusing on. And I've been uh, reading a lot of books on on that, that how they've been doing medicine in the past and stuff. And, and it's quite interesting, actually. And not just for this, the things that comes out, but even for personal, uh, it gets to understand better my jobs and, and the evolution of where we're coming from. And like, for example, one thing that was interesting in the book that I got from uh, the nursing from 1934, so 1934, way back when, they already said that gauze was not a good thing. 1934, way, all way back then, not good thing. And yet, we're still using it now. So what happened in between is quite interesting because why we went back to something that we already knew that it was not good back then. And so that's why it kind of almost justify again the use of the dressings that we'll be talking about and the kind of 21st century, which was kind of almost, um, if they had them uh, back then, they already had the good uh, thinking of not using gauze. So... Uh, anyway, we'll let you on that, and uh, hopefully that was um, not too painful, and that you'll find a little bit of uh, interesting read in the book uh, in the link that also will talk to you soon.